When you think of batteries, do you picture the annoyingly hard to keep track of AA or D cell batteries for your remote or flashlight? Or do you think of the battery in your phone in your hand that you're probably watching this video on at this very moment? No matter the answer, batteries have been an integral part of powering lives for generations now. Hello and welcome to For the Sake of Curiosity. My name is Tommy and in this video we're going to go over the history of the battery from a possible ancient origin in the Middle East to the lithium ion batteries that are poised to power our future. Found in what is now modern day Iraq, it is a set of artifacts that include a ceramic pot, a tube of copper, and a rod of iron. Corrosion of the metal seems to indicate that an acidic agent such as wine or vinegar was added to the jar to be used as an electrolyte to power the proposed world's oldest battery. In 1748, he constructed a multiple plate capacitor that he called an electrical battery by placing seven panes of glass sandwiched between lead plates suspended with silk cords and connected by wires. The voltaic pile was the first electrical battery that could continuously provide an electric current to a circuit. It was invented by Italian physicist Alessandro Volta, who published his experiments in 1799. It consists of two electrodes, one made of zinc which is used as an anode and the other of copper which is used as a cathode. The electrolyte is either sulfuric acid mixed with water or a form of saltwater brine. Since Volta's battery consisted of brine soaked pieces of cloth sandwiched between zinc and copper discs piled in a stack, this resulted in electrolyte leakage as the weight of the disc squeezed the electrolyte out of the cloth. The trough battery was a variant of Volta's voltaic pile and was invented by William Cruikshank in 1800. Cruikshank solved the problem of spillage by laying the battery on its side in a rectangular box. The inside of this box was filled with shellac for insulation, and pairs of welded together zinc and copper plates were laid out in this box evenly spaced. The spaces between the plates were filled with dilute sulfuric acid. So long as the box was not knocked about, there was no risk of electrolyte spillage. The Daniel cell is a type of electrochemical cell invented in 1836 by John Frederick Daniel, a British chemist and meteorologist, and it consists of a copper pot filled with a copper sulfate solution in which is immersed in an unglazed earthenware container filled with sulfuric acid and a zinc electrode. He was searching for a way to eliminate the hydrogen bubble problem found in the voltaic pile, and his solution was to use a second electrolyte to consume the hydrogen produced by the first. The Daniel cell is also the historical basis for the contemporary definition of the volt, which is the unit of electromotive force in the international system of units. The definitions of electrical units that were proposed in 1881 by the International Conference of Electricians were designed so that the electromotive force of the Daniel cell would be about one volt. With contemporary definitions, the standard potential of the Daniel cell at 25 degrees Celsius is actually 1.1 volt. The lead acid battery was invented in 1859 by French physicist Gaston Plant and is the earliest type of rechargeable battery. Despite having a very low energy to weight ratio and a low energy to volume ratio, its ability to supply high surge currents means that the cells have a relatively large power to weight ratio. These features along with their low cost make them attractive for use in motor vehicles to provide the high current required by starter motors. Large format lead acid designs are widely used for storage and backup power supplies and cell phone towers, high availability settings like hospitals and standalone power systems. The lead acid cell contained a lead anode, lead dioxide cathode and a sulfuric acid electrolyte. A dry cell is a type of electric battery commonly used for portable electronic devices. It was developed in 1886 by German scientist Carl Gassner after development of wet zinc carbon batteries. A dry cell uses a paste electrolyte with only enough moisture to allow current to flow. Unlike a wet cell, a dry cell can operate in any orientation without spilling as it contains no free liquid making it suitable for portable equipment. By comparison, the first wet cells were typically fragile glass containers with lead rods hanging from the open top and needed careful handling to avoid spillage. Lead acid batteries did not achieve the safety and portability of the dry cell until the development of the gel battery. 
Wet cells have continued to be used for hydrating applications such as starting internal combustion engines because inhibiting the electrolyte flow tends to reduce the current capability. A lithium ion battery is a type of rechargeable battery. Lithium ion batteries are commonly used for portable electronics in electronic vehicles and are growing in popularity for military and aerospace application. In the batteries, lithium ions move from the negative electrode through an electrolyte to the positive electrode during discharge and back when charging. Lithium ion batteries use an intercalated lithium compound as the material at the positive electrode and typically graphene at the negative electrode. The batteries have a high energy density, no memory effect, and low self-discharge. A lithium polymer battery is a rechargeable battery of lithium ion technology using a polymer electrolyte instead of a liquid electrolyte. These batteries provide higher specific energy than any other lithium battery power types and are used in applications where weight is a critical feature such as mobile devices, radio controlled aircraft, and some electric vehicles. And that was a brief history of the battery. Make sure to give the thumbs up button a gentle tap so we can be blessed by that almighty YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button as well and turn on the bell notification so that way you know when a new video is uploaded. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.